Okay, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, let us start as usual uh, by you giving me a short sign that you can properly see and hear me. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, okay, great. Um, I will start with some general remarks in the beginning. Um, some of these things we can uh, discuss further on. Um, the one very important uh, issue is like I was reminded several times, but I thought actually I said it in the beginning as well. Um, the task of um, lecturing here is not only presenting the text of the required reading as we assume that everyone who properly want to participate has read the text so in order not to bore uh, the people it is uh, it is wise to look beyond what i provide is just very basic information and uh, in order to learn how to present make your own research on the topic and if necessary you can always approach me in terms of uh, advice if you need so uh, secondly, please do all uh, take into consideration our um, guidelines of presentation which I've sent around. If you have not received them for some reason, please do approach me. I actually expect the presentations to be somehow in the manner how the guideline suggests. Um, this is good for the audience and this is also good uh, as a documentation of the content you have presented. Once again, I think I said this in the first meeting, but not everyone was there in the first meeting. Um, it is mandatory that you send um, that what you have by Sunday and no later than Monday in order for me to um, have enough time to upload everything and so forth. The meeting we are having in advance is not mandatory. You can have it. It's suggested that you have to take the most out of it, like out of the virtual classroom. Um, but please take this into consideration when you plan your presentations that uh, um, we are not only meeting, but that there is a presentation that we can like use for, for discussing uh, how the whole session is going to go. Um, what I would like to add as well, as we have um, advanced uh, in our uh, seminar for quite a bit, um, I would ask you at the end of uh, the sessions to give um, a polite uh, but critical feedback to those which have presented, not in terms of like saying what all went wrong, but just um, that we all uh, like come at the end maybe to some general standards of like how to present what can be done better, what is maybe not so effective, just to have a bit more learning in terms of didactics in the virtual classroom. Um, then there has been a thing um, that um, Andrea wanted wants to change um, her presentation um, and that we have um, at the end of the seminar two persons presenting on a topic, uh, Serkan and another one. But Serkan, I do not see here. Um, I think Kilian has been you, right? You are you are presenting together together with Serkan. Kilian, you have now speaking rights, but Kilian is absent. Okay. Um, we leave it like this. I think we should discuss this maybe afterwards. Um, after the session, uh, I would like, uh, as this has led to confusion and I haven't been clear about this, my fault so far. Um, after the session, I would like to meet uh, with the presenter uh, in the virtual classroom again uh, to discuss how it went and maybe some feedback and so forth. Uh, yeah, this was it from my side. Has there been anything from your side so far? Yeah, I hope you can hear me. Um, it was me presenting with Zircon. So I just wanted to to say that to keep things clear. OK, very good. Um, Sebastian, would you, would you mind joining after the class, uh, the virtual classroom again, that we can discuss? Maybe uh, there is an option that you can overtake Andrea's uh, presentation. 
uh, if Andrea wanna wanna pick um, Chris presentation because Andrea is going to present in two weeks and this would be an option you don't have to I can do this as well but this would be an option because I think it was has been you saying that uh, at the end of the semester is is not so optimal for you right uh, I think it was Elkan uh, who okay. thought that it was not so good for him but I will join the class afterwards it's okay wonderful okay great then I won't um, uh, use more time of Marcus, but step back and uh, give him the floor. Yeah, can you hear me? Maybe you can give me just a sign uh, with a rise in the hand. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon. <laughs> Um, yeah, today we want to deal with the dependencies theory and the globalization theory and its critics. And I can show you the table of content to, so you can see what we're going to do today. Um, um, first of all, the introduction. Um, after we dealt um, with the modernization theory and the world systems theory, um, today we want to shed the light on the dependencies theory and the globalization theory. Um, before we continue next week with the um, world views on the environmental changes. Um, First of all, um, I would like to do a quick review, a really quick review on the world system theory and the modernization theory to get them uh, back into your mind and to, en to, en um, to, be, to ensure um, that you can compare them with the dependency theory and the globalization theory. Um, afterwards, I would like to introduce you to the dependency theory and the globalization theory. Um, and um, tell you about the history of the theory, the critics, and um, explain you um, how, how these theories are explained in under development and um, when it emerged and stuff like this. And um, I will finish uh, the presentation with a conclusion and um, a short cartoon video, it's only two minutes long, um, about development um, and uh, maybe we can discuss uh, um, together with the, with the question I have for this uh, video um, on this video and, and you can tell me what you think, think about it. Yeah, and afterwards um, we will do a debate which uh, Götz will lead. Okay, and um, if anyone has uh, some question at any point, you can just raise your hand and you can interrupt me or also feel free to interrupt me anytime. Okay, um, the modernization theory, um, as Marika and Lisa um, already explained um, us both theories pretty well, um, I don't, and I don't want to bore you. Um, I just decided uh, not to repeat in it, and, and, and so I only have uh, summed it up uh, with the most uh, important issues on two slides. And as I don't want to bore you because we already had this, I just uh, maybe give you uh, one minute or half a minute uh, so you can review it and um, have it in mind again. So uh, maybe we can just have a look on this slide uh, for for half a minute um, from now. This modernization theory and afterwards the uh, world systems theory. Yeah, if nobody will raise the hand, I will continue to the next slide. Uh, in case you need more time, just let me know. Um, the, the next uh, slide is about the World System Theory, and I propose to do uh, the same like, like we did, so we have like half a minute to, to review this so, uh, theory. Okay, I guess this is enough to, to review the, uh, the series we already dealt, uh, dealt with. 
And uh, now I would like to, to come to the new theory, the dependency theory and the globalization theory. First of all, the um, dependency theory. Um, the uh, theory um, of, of dependency theory is questioning the hege hegemony of the US and Europe and um, oppose uh, uh, an understanding of development from the point of view from the third world. So that uh, differs from the other um, theories which are most uh, mostly uh, European or US centric. Um, it argues uh, in general that uh, the, the general pattern of dependency and exploitation of the third world um, continues for a long time, actually from the uh, 16th century uh, until now. And um, the theory has a profound critique on the theoretical uh, categories um, and uh, development policies by the West. Um, uh, they argue that they would not be appropriate to understand the problems of the third world and, um, yeah, and, and, and what they care about the third world. Um, the theory uh, got a boost um, by the Chinese and Cuban revolution when the, when the socialist uh, government uh, take over the, the power, um, which makes Marxism um, at all popular uh, to Latin America universities in this time and, and uh, lead to a general um, radical um, uh, generation of neo-Marxists. Um, by the way, I uh, added uh, in the appendix on the last slide, which you maybe can see later when, when the, um, I guess the uh, PowerPoint will be sent to you, uh, I make an overview um, where you can differ see the difference between neo-Marxists and um, um, orthodox Marxists. Um, just to mention one thing, uh, I guess the most important thing is that uh, um, the orthodox uh, Marxists um, uh, say, uh, first of all, um, um, revolution or takeover of the bourgeoisie is ne uh, necessary before the workers or the proletariat can take over. And um, the neo-Marxists uh, argue uh, we don't have to wait until the bourgeoisie uh, is, ta um, um, is taking over the power and retreat from the power. We can just go directly to, the, to a socialist uh, society where the proletariat or, or the worker is, uh, is ruling. Um, it was a kind uh, of an answer to the, um, to the um, ECLA, which is the Economic uh, Commission in Latin America. And this commission proposed uh, with this uh, agenda um, growth, welfare, and, and democracy and stuff like this. But uh, instead um, of this taking place, a gap between rich uh, and, and pure uh, occurs and uh, even became a bigger unemplo unemployment uh, raised, um, infl in, um, uh, inflation, uh, the currency uh, was uh, devaluated, and uh, repressive military regimes came into power, especially uh, in Latin America. Um, for a long time, and um, this uh, theory was uh, um, partic in particular appreciated by uh, young radical U.S. researchers uh, during the time uh, when other um, uh, events uh, took place, like the Campos revolts, uh, the anti-war protests, for example, against the Vietnam. Uh, I know uh, Vietnam was was um, starting earlier, but was still continuing or the aftermath of it and um, also the um, anti-war protests in general and the women um, movements and uh, liberation movements. Yeah. Um, in general, um, the de uh, dependency we argue is that there are three main phases of exploitation. Um, the first one was uh, took place in the col uh, colonial uh, dependency. Um, from the end of the 15th century uh, until um, yeah, the, the mid of the 20th century, um, when, uh, when uh, um, in particular Europe uh, um, had still um, co uh, colonies all, all around the world. Um, the second uh, phase was the financial industrial dependence, uh, which emerged uh, uh, in the end of the 19th century. And uh, the third and last um, um, phase of exploitation was the uh, um, technological industrial dependence, um, which took place directly after the um, World War um, II. Yeah, um, the CV also argues that um, development and underdevelopment are um, entwined processes, and uh, that uh, the reason for underdevelopment is uh, is um, mostly external and not internal, like for example the modernization uh, theory would argue. Um, um, 
also there's a hierarchical uh, dependency um, between the center and the periphery um, and so the connections from uh, from uh, from the periphery to the to the uh, center is acknowledged as harmful um, also the periphery um, is, is argued that, they, that the periphery is not uh, pure because of the uh, because they are not fully integrated into the world, but uh, due to the way they are actually integrated in it. Um, another reason for the underdevelopment uh, uh, dependency theory stresses uh, is uh, are the low wages and the cheap uh, export uh, of raw materials from the periphery to the center. Um, as well as the transfer of the profits uh, to the center, which are formerly made in the periphery, where, where, the, where the raw materials were produced and uh, um, um, were uh, um, um, got out of the, of the earth and uh, uh, were produced to, uh, to products which can be um, sold for high prices in the center. Um, also, the um, Uh, Gertz, do you want to say something? Yes. Um, there's, it has been mentioned that uh, at least one person cannot see the presentation. Um, can everyone just quickly oh. give, a, give an agree sign if you can see the presentation so that we know? OK. Uh, OK, everyone. OK. OK. Seems. OK. Problem seems to be resolved. Okay, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, yeah, where was I? Um, no problem. Um, uh, yeah, another excuse of the of the periphery is uh, that the third world countries are under the rule of of uh, Western politics, uh, Western uh, economy, and Western uh, institutions. Um, for example. Um, uh, especially Latin American um, 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 scientists argued that uh, um, institutions like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, or the uh, World Bank is ruling the world, and also um, the, the heads of, of both uh, institutions, for example, are always uh, either uh, European or, um, or uh, American. And it's quite interesting, um, a few decades later, um, there's a kind of uh, integration going on where, where uh, especially Latin America or South America is trying to become uh, independent again from, from the Western society. Um, like um, they, um, yeah, they, they established a, um, a Bank of the South, uh, which has, uh, for, for, uh, like they argue, um, more um, 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 uh, better con con conditions for them, and so, so they don't have to rely on the IMF and World Bank and other mostly Western-driven institutions anymore. And um, yeah, there's in the moment there's especially when uh, when in uh, Ecuador and in uh, Venezuela and in Bolivia, uh, socialist um, governments um, took over the power. Um, they tried to to integrate more uh, the uh, Latin American continent, so they are not so um, independent from the. Western or northern uh, northern hemisphere. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Lisa, uh, do you want to say something? Because you, well, I guess it's just from you just have to, Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the CBB, um, also explains underdevelopment um, um, uh, by the fact that there is a reliance on food and raw material export of the of the um, um, of the third world. Ah, by the way, um, the the, uh, the literature was always saying third world. I guess this is out of date, but I just used the terms as it was uh, in the literature and lit literature. And um, this um, reliance on the on the raw ex uh, raw material exports um, would lead to a um, um, deterioration of uh, Latin America's um, Latin America's term of trade, uh, which uh, if in, uh, affected in turn in, in turn uh, its domestic accumulation um, of, of capital in a negative way. Um, another disadvantage is uh, um, the long-term decrease in the prices of primary goods um, like the raw materials compared with the prices for processed goods, which are um, sold in the in the um, uh, in the Western world. 
Um, also, uh, the uh, uh, dependency explains the underdevelopment uh, by blaming the Western still for the neo uh, for the colonialism and the neocolonialism. Um, there's the argument that um, the third world countries were quite advanced actually before they uh, uh, were encountered by um, colonialism, and uh, that they wouldn't be in this uh, circumstance uh, in the case that the that the uh, that the colonialism. Uh, uh, would not have ta um, taken place. Um, um, yeah, that uh, fits together with uh, with the argument that uh, the theory explains development also um, with the model of the metropolis uh, satellite mechanism, as you uh, I guess have uh, also read in the text. Um, and uh, this actually means that uh, the conqueror, the, the, so the countries which installed the colonies, um, implanted uh, satellite uh, cities in the third world to, uh, for, um, say to fa facilitate uh, the transfer of the profits and of the economic plus, um, like raw materials, uh, minerals, uh, commodities, uh, and also the profits they make with it uh, to the Western economies. Um, due to the colonial uh, colonial time, uh, the center um, has also a big uh, considerable considerable uh, technological uh, lead, and therefore the uh, uh, nowadays has uh, a technology technological um, uh, monopoly, um, and also uh, the periphery uh, complains about the global labor division, uh, where the periphery uh, with its low wages is used um, as an um, um, extended um, workbench. I don't know whether you can say it like uh, in, in German you would say a uh, workbank or, or there's an extended workshop for the Western society and uh, the big money is made uh, on the same on the other hand uh, in the West through producing valuable goods out of these uh, raw materials. So in general they would be um, unequal um, um, product structures. Um, yeah, this is was uh, basically the critic uh, that uh, um, the dependency theory has on the um, on the on the um, on the uh, development uh, how uh, or, or how, um, um, how how the Western societies or Western governments are seeing uh, their problems and uh, the issue of the um, development. Uh, now, uh, let's uh, shed the lights um, um, on the on the alternative the the dependency theory propose. Um, they actually propose uh, to strive uh, for interdependence, um, self-determination, and uh, the integration amongst other development countries. Uh, this is what I mentioned, uh, which happens actually today, that uh, they're trying to uh, to uh, create their own bank, or um, um, there's also the um, what's the name um, UNASUR, which is similar to the EU, or MERCOSUR, which is. Uh, um, agreement on, on trade between these nations, so they try to, to get independent from the uh, Western society, uh, Western governments, and Western institutions. Um, also, um, they are trying to, uh, or the proposed the dependency, uh, proposed to um, reduce imports and um, um, trying instead uh, domestically uh, production. And uh, the government um, shall uh, coordinate industrialization uh, within this, uh, in the area of the third world or the underdevelopment uh, countries and uh, push industrialization instead of a one-sided international division labor, where the third world is only used to, um, to, um, to deliver the raw materials to the West. Um, another claim of the, of the uh, dependency theory or proposal is uh, to protect protect local, um, uh, the local industry in Latin America from foreign competition, um, which could be done, for example, by terrorists. And um, they also want to redefine the whole uh, term of development. The theory argues uh, that uh, the term uh, uh, development needs to be redefined, and um, uh, that uh, development is more than just industry and rising productivity and a higher GDP, and you have, uh, they claim to, to redefine the whole term. Um, it should rather um, uh, be defined by improvement um, of the living standard or of the health conditions, um, and uh, the the majority should uh, should um, profit from the circumstances and not only the elites in in the western uh, in the western countries, but also the elites within the uh, um, underdeveloped countries. 
Um, also, they think that uh, the socialist revolution is necessary. They don't think that the circumstances for the um, underdeveloped countries will, um, will, be, will become better uh, within capitalist states. And um, as um, old elites within the periphery, uh, not in the Western states, but within the periphery, uh, would not um, uh, voluntarily accept uh, going to distance to the core countries or to retreat from their positions, um, they favor a socialist um, um, revolution where the, where the proletariat would take over the power. And um, there was actually a good quote in the literature, um, which I uh, just show you, um, which uh, sums up the alternative that the, the dependency theory proposes. Uh, shall I shall just uh, read in it. Um, econo economic backwardness of underdevelopment countries is not due to a lack of integration with capitalism, but due to the monopolistic control of foreign capital, foreign finance, and foreign technology at national and international level that prevents underdevelopment countries from reaching an, an, uh, an, as a mistake, an uh, advantaged position, resulting in um, reproduction of uh, backwardness, backward, backwardness, misery, and social marginalization within their borders. Um, yeah, um, that was uh, the first uh, um, information about the dependency theory. We will discuss later on this. Um, and if you don't have any question, I would uh, skip to the globalization theory. Oh, so uh, thank you, Gertz, for the for the for the tip. Okay, if there are no questions, I would uh, go to the globalization theory. And um, actually, uh, there are different meanings on in the globalization theory, and some don't even. Uh, recognize the globalization theory as a, as a uh, theory. Um, there are different meanings of, of globalization. Um, one, for example, is used by, by the media, by, uh, uh, by the public, by, uh, or in academic, uh, uh, or by the, uh, by the, by the uh, civil society. And the other one is more used by the academic sphere. Um, the theory argues that uh, interdependency occurs within cultural, political, and uh, economic uh, activities. And uh, examples are, for example, the uh, global, globalized trade, uh, globalized policies, cultures, uh, the migration, which uh, uh, takes place a lot uh, um, due to wars or um, just because people want to move and, and, and want to live in, in different countries. And also another um, uh, important um, aspect of globalization is a, is a knowledge uh, knowledge transfer, so that the knowledge is uh, distributed all around the world, especially uh, when the internet occurred, and uh, also, also um, environmental challenges like the global, um, global warming, for example, which uh, might be um, not at all, but in, in some meanings uh, also occurred because of the globalization, because due to the globalization people are flying more and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and producing more CO2. But this is not uh, for, for sure the main reason, uh, because before the globalization, there was also a, a lot of, um, um, consumption of, fossil, of consumption of fossil fuels. Um, nowadays, the term uh, is used uh, by almost everyone, like by politicians, by uh, journalists, by entrepreneurs, uh, and also by uh, social groups like uh, NGOs and uh, as well uh, by um, academics. Um, the globalization emerged um, with the European uh, discovery uh, phase, like when uh, when uh, uh, European uh, um, countries trying to discover the world and and to to enter new new areas of the world, and some even say it occurs earlier before the uh, European discovery, and um, it's uh, accelerated uh, especially in the 90s and 20th century, uh, when it was um, cheaper or with, with when the technology was there to to fly and to to yeah, to be from one point to another point in the world within within a few hours instead of a few uh, weeks which you needed before. Um, one feature is also that uh, that uh, the activities don't happen anymore um, within the field of national borders, but on uh, but on a global scale instead. And um, it is it might be important uh, to understand the roles of the countries which I play within uh, the mentioned. Uh, uh, international um, division of labor, like the, like the, especially the dependency we was arguing, and um, 
uh, to understand that the uh, social, political, and economic decisions uh, are more and more made uh, not anymore by uh, national states, but uh, in the case of, of Europe, for example, by the European Commission, uh, European Commission or the European Parliament. Again, if, if any questions occur, just uh, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, just one question. Uh, what, what do you understand by the term of country? A uh, nation, like yeah, like a nation state. Yeah, maybe nation state is a proper word. Huh? Well, the question is: Are are you speaking about um, the governmental institutions, or about the economy, or about the society? Because this this term is widely used, in particular in globalization theory and. It can it yeah. can mean a lot of things. I just was wondering whether you're referring to a specific meaning of it, or in a very broad, in the broadest general term, as it is used in different uh, globalization theories. I, I I was referring as in a general term to it because I, I would I wouldn't say that only the uh, it, it not only um, uh, or not only national uh, states have to deal with it, but also the social sectors, or the, especially the economy, which uh, might be even more. Global, be uh, get, getting cl uh, globalized before the national states were doing this, and yeah, I, I would I would refer to to a broad sector, not only national states. Okay. Um, the globalization CV is uh, uh, mostly uh, U.S. and European centric in comparison to the development CV, which is more. Uh, um, uh, yeah, out of the view of the third world, and, um, and claims uh, to address some uh, limitations of the modernizations dependency theory and the world system theory, um, and um, it uh, is a, a mostly a theory of um, economic development and uh, global unification in various areas, uh, as I already have mentioned, um, and here comes again, uh, this is also the cultural um, sector, the economical sector, social sector, the political sector, of course, and um, um, some even say that we live nowadays in a, a so-called global village, where 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 the world became really small, and and you can do trade and uh, all around the world and travel all around the world, uh, travel all around the world. So the the uh, the world is becoming a playing ground uh, where you can uh, go to any, at any point uh, to any place. At least for the for the for the people from the Western society, because uh, uh, for people of, of the Southern society, it's uh, sometimes uh, really hard to uh, to be allowed to come even to Europe. <laughs> um, yeah, um, the CV has a focus on cultural and economic factors, as I've already mentioned, and especially on uh, communication systems, um, because uh, um, when the um, communication systems, like for example the internet, uh, occurred, it was way uh, easier to, to do in trade all around the world, and um, yeah, it became really easy. Um, the uh, CV also provides suggestions. Um, how um, development countries um, can achieve um, standards of the development countries. So this already um, uh, made clear that uh, that the globalization theory um, argues that the uh, um, that uh, um, that the Western um, kind of development is is a, is a, uh, um, is a, is a way the, that the um, development countries should go as well. And um, the, uh, if problems that fewer in development, uh, the globalization she, uh, theory um, argues that uh, that, uh, that takes place because uh, um, development development uh, develop <laughs> development countries um, do not uh, cooperate uh, enough, but rather compete with each other. Um, um, there's also. Um, uh, saying that the, uh, there's a global accruing mechanism of integration between various actors, like uh, as I already, uh, already had mentioned, uh, the nation states, uh, the enterprises, private people, but also uh, social groups, uh, and there especially the so-called NGOs, non-governmental organizations. Okay.
Um, also, the theory of globalization argues um, that globalization is fostered uh, uh, tremendously by uh, the progress in, uh, of the of the world of technology. Um, for example, um, um, uh, 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 communication systems uh, make it uh, way easier to do trade all around the world. And uh, what they also do is uh, making the markets more uh, homogeneous. Um, and therefore, they uh, facilitate um, trade on a global scale. Um, also, uh, uh, Western accounting technologies uh, spread, and uh, this, according to the development, uh, uh, sorry, according to the globalization theory, makes um, trade um, way easier as well. Um, another feature of the globalization theory was the, uh, uh, which was always argued is uh, that. Um, um, globalization and the uh, integration which is taking place with this um, has a strong uh, influence on the devel development of economies and the um, um, and social improvements. So they argue that uh, due to, uh, that, uh, to, the, to the fact that the culture and the, and the, and the values and uh, stuff like this of every nation is distributed all around the world, the economy and uh, social um, standards will improve. Yeah, uh, the theory um, uh, recognizes that the nation states, as I've already mentioned, uh, lose more and more of their importance and uh, and value, and uh, um, more discussions are made uh, on supranational uh, organizations, where the where the um, states merge together to a supranational organization. Um, another feature of the uh, uh, yeah. Do you mean supranational or supranational organizations? Uh, supra. 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 I guess uh, the, uh, the, the European Union, for example, is a supranational organization, as I understand it, right? Yeah. W would, you, would you mind explaining just very briefly the, the concept? What is a supranational organization? Yeah, I guess a really good example, as I, as, as I already have mentioned, is the European Union, where uh, formerly um, single states um, get together and unite for, for, for organization where some of the power which were formerly by the national states goes to the um, to the to the super national organization um, but they uh, the, the members of the super national stations um, take um, in an active manner uh, part in the decision making so like uh, the, the European Union for example exists out of the of the 27 uh, member states. Would you would you add something to this, uh, Rutz, or? No, that's fine. Thank you. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, and of course um, there are arguments uh, again uh, uh, for the globalization and uh, against globalization, and um, I would like to start with the positive effects of globalization. Um, um, globalization increases, for example, the productivity and the efficiency uh, due to rationalism and uh, of production and uh, the spec of technology, uh, which I've, I've already mentioned. And uh, the uh, theory argues that especially the uh, um, development, developing uh, countries are benefiting from the cheap um, ability of uh, technology and from the um, transfer of technology to the, to the um, developing countries. Um, therefore, the uh, 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 the CV argues that uh, that the fruits of the modern uh, modern economic prosperity um, can be equal, equally enjoyed, and it's not only the case anymore that the northern hemisphere uh, enjoys uh, uh, the advantages of, of uh, industrialization, but nowadays, according to the um, globalization CV, also the um, the uh, southern hemisphere uh, can participate. And uh, and yeah and um, use the advantages of, of the um, um, industrial revolution. Um, also, it has uh, lead to a decreasing uh, of costs in data processing and uh, information storage, and um, this of course um, makes it easier to uh, communicate uh, around all around the world and uh, um, uh, go in, uh, yeah in the same in the same time makes it easier to do in trade all around the world. Um, 
uh, the CV also argues uh, that uh, interaction is not only any more limited uh, to the governments and to uh, economic affairs, but that also um, the, pr um, pr um, uh, the civil society can participate on, on global issues. For example, when you, when you see um, how powerful nowadays um, NGOs like Greenpeace are, uh, the, the CV would argue that this wouldn't be possible um, in the area before um, these technologies uh, came came into place, and uh, especially the uh, the social sector uh, um, in the social sector, the NGOs are using these technologies. Um, another uh, positive uh, uh, effect of the globalization uh, is, according to the globalization theory, uh, the positive changes in the cultural and socio-economic models of nations. Uh, like the spec, for example, of medicine, uh, which which you can know uh, um, by all around the world, but uh, which on the other side is uh, also in the, in the interest of the industry because uh, uh, due to the globalization, the markets from 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 the uh, for the companies are increasing tremendously, and they can uh, sell more products. Um, also, the CV argues that. Um, um, uh, that uh, due to the to the globalization, minorities have nowadays more possibilities, um, like uh, participating on the uh, on on the uh, on decision making processes, especially with the with the new um, uh, technology and communication systems. Um, of course, there are also um, negative effects of the of the globalization. Um, for example, um, indeed, globalizations, uh, globalization uh, gives minorities more poss possibilities. Um, but um, on the other hand, uh, powerful um, um, political and business uh, sectors and um, still ensure the, that they have the ultimate uh, decision making uh, um, in the inter interconnected world, and uh, therefore um, the uh, uh, this. Um, view on development is, is um, still Western-centric, like especially um, US and uh, European-centric. Uh, another, another negative effect um, are low wages in the periphery and relatively uh, high wages in the, in the industrialized, industrialized countries. And um, also um, the worldwide um, uh, interdependency um, of economies um, are good in a, in a way that, that, that you can buy everything all around the world. But um, this can also produce uh, um, in really quickly instability. For example, uh, if you take the uh, world financial crisis, um, uh, this uh, crisis emerged in or occurred in, uh, in only small countries and affected really quickly and really fast the whole world. Um, we still have to deal with the aftermath of this crisis. Um, further negative effects, um, or further negative effect is. Um, uh, that the capability um, to uh, participate on this globalization process differs, and uh, some uh, groups are um, profiting, uh, benefit um, uh, in a, in a um, pretty well from the globalization, but other might get uh, marginalized. Um, also, uh, the globalization would argue uh, that uh, there's a monopoly of, uh, of uh, powerful units, like uh, this could be, for example, nations, but also institutions and uh, uh, big uh, companies. Uh, if, you, if you take, for example, Mon Monsanto, uh, which uh, has a really huge monopoly, monopoly uh, nowadays, or companies like Nestle, Unilever in the, in the food sector. And, um, also, the theory says that, uh, or the academics in the theory says that uh, uh, there is a limitation of government's uh, interdependence due to the high wages of, uh, uh, due to the high wages, for example, in the Western uh, society, uh, unemployment is rising because uh, more and more jobs are shifted away to to uh, to development countries, uh, especially China, for example, and um, also um, all traditions could be threatened. Uh, or around the world because in a globalized uh, world the culture spreads. But uh, I guess the majority would, uh, wouldn't say that uh, cultural um, mixture is, uh, is a disadvantage, but rather an advantage. And uh, But however, all these uh, circumstances which uh, come along with the globalization theory um, could lead uh, to um, um, traditionalism in an extreme way, 
uh, which can be, for example, um, seen by uh, by the um, emergence of uh, populist uh, um, um, parties, like we have, for example, in Germany with the AfD, or uh, the, the Dutch in the Netherlands has also um, a quite uh, a populist uh, party, and um, yeah, these uh, populi populist parties, um, it, um, um, as it looks like, are getting more powerful. And this could be a negative. Um, um, effect of the globalization. Yeah, um, so now I give you a um, short insight into the um, uh, dependency theory and the globalization theory. And um, as um, uh, we have now um, dealt with all four theories, um, I thought it would be a good idea to, uh, in order to be able to compare the main uh, features of these four theories, um, so I decided to um, to um, create a table. Uh, first, I tried to use a table uh, which uh, was in the text of uh, Sharia, uh, Bubakar uh, Sharia. Um, but then I realized that it's, it's way too small to, to show everything uh, which is on this table. So I created um, this one. Oops, this one. And um, yeah, there maybe I can can. Uh, um, maybe I can um, give you like half a minute again to to uh, to have a look on this uh, uh, table I created, and we can uh, just uh, use it for a discussion later on after the conclusion. Yeah. I can skip back to this. Uh, yeah, as Mareike is not here today, um, my uh, question would actually be whether uh, Lisa, who has presented uh, on the world system theory, um, would agree with this uh, type of uh, classification which is presented here. Um, hello, everyone. I'm a bit, I'm not sure if the cause of underdevelopment, wh what do you mean by social changes? Could you maybe explain that a little? In the world system theory? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that uh, that um, social changes emerge due to the to the uh, to the interconnectedness of the world and to the to, especially to the capitalistic uh, system, and that um, that these uh, causes um, social changes and uh, also causes uh, kind of uh, underdevelopment because uh, the the um, um, uh, the the. States of the southern hemisphere are supposed to to develop in the in a kind uh, like the um, uh, northern hemisphere would like to have it, and this could have uh, negative uh, effects on the on their development goals. But but feel free to 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 correct me if you if you have another view on it. Mm, I was just thinking that Wallerstein doesn't really talk that much about the societies themselves. It's rather about when the core states change their um, politics or, or their, let's say, economic politics, you know, if they want to expand or not, then uh, countries in the semi-periphery and the periphery have to react accordingly to, um, to then develop. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure if I actually agree with you, but maybe I haven't understood you properly. <laughs> Maybe the words are misleading in this case. I, I just tried to to put everything in a in a in a really small table. I, maybe I, I didn't use the, the right words for, in this case. Uh, Gertz, uh, what you uh, uh, what what would you um, 
what would you fill in if you only would have uh, uh, two words uh, to okay <laughs> Um, to be honest, I'm, I was a bit confused about the cause of underdevelopment. I'm not even sure if Wallerstein actually said that much about it, apart from that it's the, the capitalist system and, and perhaps colonialism mm -hmm. yeah. being a cause. Yeah, Yeah, but yeah. this regards, Elisa, I, I, actually, I actually would agree. I mean, I, I would rather put in capitalism uh, because the cause of underdevelopment is the world system. And the world mm. system, as we have discussed, maybe models in a certain way, uh, like the impacts of the system, how it, like, and uh, how 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 it develops or how how it goes uh, further, and social changes are a part of it. But I would I wouldn't I wouldn't say that social changes are the cause of underdevelopment because the cause yeah. of underdevelopment is I would say capitalism maybe. Uh, colonialism but uh, if you put colonialism there you need to put colonialism in the slot of dependency theory as well yeah yeah I'll, I'll correct this thanks perhaps also maybe yeah that's very detailed now but maybe the focus also on world system theory is not maybe the relation between countries or states in like between nation states but rather between the different spheres you mean the civic Which obviously uh, are countries as well, but I, I think it's rather about yeah. how the core states and, and the semi periphery or the, the countries in the semi periphery are in how do you call it? Um well yeah, what relationship they, these countries have with the core states rather in general. As it's a very holistic approach, I'd rather suggest that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Do you want to add something, Brett, or can I continue? No, you just need to remove our microphone rights uh, manually after we have spoken. This is sorry, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's continue with the uh, conclusion. If it skips to the next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, I would argue that uh, the reality uh, of nowadays is uh, mostly, uh, or the best being reflected by the modernization theory. And uh, this is because um, if you, if you uh, look how uh, policy nowadays is shaped, um, today I, uh, I would argue that uh, the modernization theory fits the best to it. Um, for example, if you see the spread of uh, neoliberalism uh, policies, which is go which is going on, and uh, therefore I would, would argue that uh, uh, modernization theory um, would fit the best to the uh, to the um, policy of today. But we can uh, have a debate later on this as well. Um, also, uh, I would argue that um, if you take a look on the main uh, uh, challenges of the human uh, humanity. And the planet uh, with which are facing, it is important, uh, really important to um, to uh, overcome this division between the periphery and the uh, and the um, uh, center. Because uh, in, uh, when you when you look at problems like the climate change, I guess we have we have not really time to to uh, to uh, to be separated, but should uh, should uh, unite to to tackle these changes all together. Uh, climate change was only one, one example for uh, for um, um, for uh, problems that uh, humans are facing. And uh, I was uh, would also um, uh, say that uh, um, that um, if you if you deal in with this uh, with this. Uh, um, uh, different uh, theories um, that it is um, on the one hand uh, um, important to to recognize uh, um, um, from which uh, part of the world they came and what interests they might have and um, also um, it might be necessary um, to uh, to start a discussion uh, in, in, in policies and uh, economies but also in the social spheres um, uh, what development is because uh, I guess uh, um, the, um, 
uh, um, argument that uh, um, p um, only industrialized countries are, are developed or that uh, that you can measure it with a, with a high GDP it might be outdated nowadays uh, with, with problems like climate change, as I've mentioned. And yeah, that would it be from my side. Um, if you have direct questions, you can just raise your hand. And uh, on the uh, otherwise, I would uh, like to hand over to Götz, and uh, then we could have the debate. And also, I would like to show you the um, video. So, if you have any questions, just uh, raise your hand. You can also, if if you want. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm a bit surprised that no one has a question uh, because I uh, I find your hypothesis of interest, but also uh, in need of more argu arguments. You say that um, the contemporary reality is reflected best by modernization theory. Why is that? Yeah, the the best uh, example uh, uh, which uh, which. Uh, uh, which I was, would think about is that uh, that uh, neoliberalism neo is uh, sp uh, spreading all around the world. Like the um, the, the capitalistic uh, Western view on things is is, uh, is is going nowadays to almost every part of the world. And um, like the counterparts, like socialist countries, are uh, not that powerful anymore. For example, uh, in the uh, till the eight, uh, late 80s, we still had the Soviet uh, Union with. Uh, with uh, with another um, uh, or with a with a um, economic system which really differ uh, was different from the from the Western society and um, the because uh, you don't have this um, this uh, yeah I would say the majority nowadays is capitalistic I mean you have uh, like states like Cuba or North Korea which doesn't really play a big role in the in the world. And um, like the, 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 there's only one uh, ideology, I would, would argue, nowadays, which is a capitalistic system. Sure, sure. But I mean, uh, okay, okay Lisa, I, mean, I, I was just wondering why you think it is this reflected best by because modernization theory is more than capitalist, a certain explanation of what kind of things, what goes with what, you know, what, what, like a kind, kind of definition of like uh, development and that what you say is important to find but I, I will step back because um, uh, Lisa actually uh, had, had right said. Mm. Uh, so I guess your microphone is okay. activated can you, Lisa? Can you? Cool. Uh, yeah I was going in a similar direction I'd rather say that today's world reflects that the ideas of the modernization theory are still at work. So modernization, the ideas in the modernization theory, I think, were heavily influenced by colonialism, with the view that the so-called Western world had under colonies, that they were underdeveloped and in need of development to become like the West. And I think that still hasn't changed. I'd rather say we can still see the massive influence of colonialism and the modernization theory in today's policies rather than modernization theory describing yeah. the uh, I guess uh, yeah that's true but I would also argue that uh, it is necessary to uh, differ uh, between the academic sphere and the, uh, the uh, policies that uh, took place in reality I mean in the in the academic sphere there are still uh, a lot of um, uh, scientists who argue with the, uh, in favor of the of the dependency theory, which is uh, in the in reality completely out outdated, I would say. Well, this this would be another question of mine. Um, I would actually oppose your last uh, hypothesis. I wouldn't say that a lot of academics are still following the dependency theory. Dependency theory actually is dead since uh, the end of the 80s in particular uh, after the breakdown of the soviet union and that what is called real existing socialism uh, which also carries a lot of questions like of like how different 
the economic system in the East has really been from the one from the West. There are also a lot of ongoing debates. We, I don't want to go into this, but I want to I want to refer to to uh, some notes which I've provided, which also may help us. Uh, like just clarifying, I mean, you, uh, y everyone may have his or her own opinion. Um, uh, if you look on the left hand side, you see two German articles, which I've linked, unfortunately, just in German. Um, but the one is very interesting. It, uh, it argues, uh, gives some numbers on uh, state intervention in German economy, uh, which actually is an opposite to the neb neoliberal view and that what is actually the main linkage in modernization theory saying like the less state we have the more economic growth we we create and uh, secondly which is very interesting it's a study of the friedrich ebert stiftung uh, which comes to the conclusion um, that uh, inequality has increased tremendously in germany which actually became an obstacle for growth which like contradicts main assumptions of modernization theory which if it would be true we should have a more of growth by uh, allowing more free market uh, intervention you also all may fi can can download this when you click on the pdf file on the right hand side on the top it's uh, 12953 pdf and i have received uh, like five minutes before our session started uh, the answer by the author of this um, of this study from Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, and he said by December we are going to receive uh, an English an English version of um, these uh, numbers they have used for calculating, and I'm certainly going to provide uh, the English version of the um, of the report as well for your interest. Um, I just struggle a bit with this argument of you saying like that modernization theory reflects. Um, the contemporary reality very good because I I I mean I feel always there are a lot of doubts uh, by the facts we are we are reading um, that this theory is not really sufficient to describe all this in particular if you look at like if a, a growth is limited or like like um, bumps against limits due to inequality what does it say about a theory which actually does not look into inequality as an issue of describing social reality yeah but um, but I would argue uh, that uh, of course there's a, a broad uh, consensus that uh, and maybe that uh, maybe profit might not be the only uh, aim you should have when, uh, while doing trade or uh, um, increasing the, the profit but um, I, I for me modernization theory uh, um, is quite similar to what took place in uh, with the uh, with the neoliberal paradigm, and I would argue that the, um, the, that these neoliberal uh, theories are deeply uh, um, in our society, in our economy, and our uh, 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 politics. I guess if you if you study uh, nowadays, for example, economics, uh, what you learn is is is, is pure neoliberalism. I mean, I don't. I, I'm not in favor of this, but. No, I, I, I'm I'm not totally against it. I'm I'm just looking for the the small issues in between. I mean, if uh, Germany is spending more uh, state in uh, intervention money than ever, uh, by at the same time imposing neoliberal politics in Europe and all over the world, um, then I would actually rather say that. Uh, that modernization theory reflects a part of our yeah. social reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the, uh, for, for sure the, for the, the globalization theory reflects it as well. You can argue because the whole world is globalizing at the moment. Yeah, I, th I see your point. The, uh, does anyone else want to add something to this uh, um, conclusion or to this uh, arguments I made here, um, because otherwise I would, uh, yeah. Then maybe just, just let me ask uh, uh, the class a question. Um, based on the on the text you all have read, um, what, 
Uh, there were, there's actually there's actually a, a hypothesis by uh, my, the second supervisor of my thesis. He unfortunately died, uh, Thomas Wotien. He argued in his in his paper on dependency theory and demoralization theory that these two theories uh, are not so different, rather alike. And uh, con considering page 107 uh, of the of the required reading for today, I would like to know. Um, like uh what do you think about his hypothesis uh, considering um the comparison of the two theories yeah, but do you mean now between the dependency theory and and the modernization theory as, as on page 104 uh, 107 sorry 107 Uh, yeah, does anyone uh, anyone want to say something to the question, which was, I guess, asked to the whole group? Or... I mean, what we can also do is uh, go to the deep... Ah, okay, Lisa. Well, at some point, I think um, what what may be very similar between modernization and dependency theory are the underlying assumptions that not not the underlying assumptions, but the the binary of core versus periphery and and the differences between them. But then there are so many differences, you know, where they go from there. So I I can't really see them being that similar, to be honest. Also because but perhaps that's because we know that dependency theory has come from the periphery and modernization theory from the core. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually, I actually would like all the others also to actively participate in uh, these debates, as I hope everyone has at least. Uh, the text, um, but the main argument uh, what Tien is making actually is exactly the underlying assumption, uh, which is that there is an uh, uh, an ever growing cake, which can be parted, and it's just a question how to make a proper split. So uh, he argued, saying like, well, uh, the basic assumption of dependency theory was to that uh, you need uh, to disconnect the periphery from the world market so that they can proper de properly develop. If you do so, they will develop, which actually bases on the assumption that there is a cake that can just grow and grow and grow so that everyone can de develop. And this actually also was the controversy between dependency theorists and uh, world system theorists, which at this time in the 70s was lost by the world system theorists because um, dependency theory as Marcus had said, uh, became also very influential in the governmental sector um, and therefore received a lot of support by, uh, by governmental institutions and uh, became the guideline for a lot of um, uh, governmental um, development strategies. Uh, but this, I mean, we, we don't we don't need to agree to this. I think it's it's an interesting thought experiment if we try to think like, what is actually uh, the root cause of, uh, of the theories um, uh, on which we are um, elaborating? Which bring, brings us uh, to the other question, uh, why did dependency theory somehow die out? I mean, wha what do you think? I mean, maybe, Max, maybe you know, but... Uh, does anyone want to say something to this question? Otherwise, I would uh, tell my point of view. Uh, I can maybe start and maybe you can uh, answer. Um, 
I, I would say that the, the main problem of the of the dependency theory was the collapse of the Soviet Union because the uh, Soviet Union was one of the only states who were, was able for a long time to to um, show uh, to compete with the with the uh, uh, system of the Western world as, uh, um, with its roots in the uh, in America with the capitalist system. And uh, when this system collapsed, collapsed, I guess uh, uh, that really weakened the the whole theory. Well, yeah. basically, basically the the Soviet Union, uh, like the Eastern Bloc, they they didn't they didn't follow the dependency theory. I mean, the Soviet Union was too big anyway. I mean, it was not not really the periphery, but in in one yeah, continue. Uh, but but in one point, um, the the final fact was that um, it didn't work. So uh, Latin American countries have tried, uh, and the problem was that the economy economy didn't grow, and indeed. Um, in one point you are right, the, the Eastern or like the so-called socialist countries, they have been uh, a resource for this type of research. So they financed a lot of research on like alternatives to existing uh, uh, so-called capitalist theories. Um, but uh, and when this died, uh, it came to kind of a phase of and uh, a revival of the modernization theory, which at the end uh, was the uh, uh, coup de gras of uh, of the modern of the dependency theory uh, as they couldn't continue the research and they didn't pro couldn't provide the data for it yeah, yeah but i also was not uh, what arguing that uh, that like, that the Soviet union, Soviet union was part of the periphery but as you have mentioned like i guess they really supported uh, many uh, socialist states in uh, especially africa and uh, south america or, or for example take cuba which was uh, which was really in trouble after the Soviet Union collapsed. Yes, but exactly because they didn't apply the dependency theory, because they haven't been independent from the world market or from the Eastern Soviet ah, market. Okay. Yeah. I know that your point. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, uh, seems like the participants are a bit tired <laughs> or not so um, happy to discuss um, but maybe we can uh, continue with the which is a debate as well which is uh, then maybe yeah we'll see how it works but uh, maybe we can I would, would um, uh, suggest that we uh, have a um, that we go into the debate and uh, look uh, before we start with it uh, um, the video I, I, I have uh, prepared and then maybe uh, the discussion will go on. Do you agree, Gertz? Uh, okay. Yeah, then I can hand over to you first, or I can start the video. But I guess uh, can you do it from the from the server, or can I? Maybe it's better to say nothing about the video in advance. Uh, just uh, have a, a look on it, and uh, then afterwards we can use it for discussion. You want me to start it or? Uh... Can I? I don't know. Okay, then let let me do it. It's not a problem. Yeah. As we set out through the dense jungle, we had but one goal in mind to bring the people sustainable development. However, in this case, we did encounter an unexpected challenge. We discovered that these people, in their own peculiar kind of way, were already sustainable. So all we could really bring them was development. We started by taking them through the process of participatory community project building but they refused to fully participate. Next, we tried income-generating activities. 
but for some strange reason they seemed satisfied with less than a dollar a day. We even tried empowering them, but their reaction was much more powerful than we expected. But we weren't going to give up on these people so easily. We knew they needed our help, even if they weren't aware of it. So we opted for the multi-stakeholder cross-disciplinary approach. We developed innovative private sector partnerships. Then we taught the people vocational skills that were adapted to a shifting economy. We created tough conservation measures to protect the environment from further harm. And we developed ambitious social safety nets to protect those unable to care for themselves. I'd say it's been a challenging process. We've learned many important lessons and we really look forward to applying them elsewhere in the future. But for now, let us just say, welcome to the global village. Yeah, uh, um, I thought it would be a good uh, 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 way to start the debate uh, on, uh, on one question which I have uh, prepared as well. I just um, um, open it. I guess it was pot eight. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, after we have uh, dealt with all the theories and and uh, and um, we are reading about uh, what what these theories, um, how, how what they call development and and uh, what are the causes for underdevelopment, it would be interesting to speak about uh, what uh, development means for you. And therefore, I would like to ask you this uh, question: What are appropriate indicators to describe measure development, uh, considering the four theories that we have? I would uh, first I can start I would argue that uh, that uh, nowadays uh, the the main uh, indicator is the GDP how how uh, the the economy has grown and um, for sure more and more especially the environmental organizations are arguing against it and saying we have to to uh, to develop uh, more uh, uh, new indicators, but I, I would argue that uh, the um, making profit and making the uh, um, the econ economy grow is still the um, prior um, um, goal of the economy, but also of the of the politics, because I guess the politics want to um, create jobs, and uh, therefore they need an economy which is growing. Would you agree with me? Yep, you see. Um, well, I think that economic or development in economic terms, that's one thing, modernization and world system, and I think also dependency theory kind of agree on that you, that development is measured by economic means and not very much in, um, they don't, for example, look very much at democracy or, or what kind of political system or the distribution of wealth or whatever. But yeah. please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not sure how dependency theory sees that. Yeah, I, I would say that they, uh, they even propose to, uh, to, um, to, um, Boost uh, civilization, and that, uh, I guess therefore they are they are seeking as well for for uh, um, grown grown economies, but uh, also they are seeking to become independent from the from the um, as they call it the center. And um, yeah, but I would would, I would agree that the um, the, um, the dependency CV is still in favor for um, um, for growth of the economy. Does Lisa want to add something, or did you write? Yeah, okay. I. Okay, working. Okay. 
Um, I'd say that, yeah, economic factors are a really, really important point for measuring development each day. Um, so I'd argue that also democracy uh, is rather important um, for most people, I think. So, uh, for example, when you look at um, why the US starts wars <laughs> or why we participate in wars, uh, it's usually to bring the people democracy. Um, so, yeah, I think capitalism uh, and democrat democ ah, democracy are really important systems uh, that people consider to be a sign of development. Mm. So, economic first, but democracy in second, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Thank you for this contribution. Um, I guess Gretz and Julia want to say something. I just have to, for some reason, no, no, okay. I guess now Julia can speak and Gretz should be able. Maybe Julia starts because, no, I just activated her microphone. Ah, uh, something is wrong. Sorry. Marcus, Marcus, let, let let me let me handle quickly this. I think it's otherwise getting a little confusing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Julia, it's it's yours. You you have speaking rights. The other one, please raise. Okay, hand thank again. you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I actually the question is quite huge. It's really huge and controversial. I think. Um, I would also suggest that, like, yeah, we we agree that. Uh, economic uh, development is one of the main indicator for me measuring development but probably then we, we will need to define the kind of economic indicators that we meant what is it like only GDP if, are we going to follow the present mainstream economic indicators that is still very much you know from this like modernization world system capitalistic kind of characteristics and and it's being discussed in these theories or probably can we just come out with another economic indicators that uh, we think can be an alternative to the mainstream uh, present one that we have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, but but I what what yeah. Is other more people want to say something? Otherwise, I would argue. Gertz, Gertz, do you want to? Oh, Lisa. Um, well, I'd say this question, I think what should come first is more what is development even? Like, the one question is asking what do most people consider to be development, uh, for example, according to these theories? But what, mm. rather, I think what's much more important is rather the question, what, what does develop do? So what do we consider to be development and are the indicators we use the right ones we should be using? Yeah, this is actually a good question, but, uh, but um, yeah, that's, that's what, uh, what I planned for, uh, the discussion could be about. Like, uh, is, is uh, um, a country developed if, if it has a high GDP or, or, or other would argue um, if the people are lucky, like Nepal, uh, try to, to introduce an, a new um, indicator or the, the health system, who who's be allowed to use it, or education system. I, I, I would argue that uh, the, the GDP shouldn't be the, uh, um, the, uh, the indicator where you can measure weights. But I would doubt, actually, that uh, in a capitalistic um, economy, it is possible to, to neglect uh, um, the GDP, because as, as I, I would argue that uh, in a capitalist system, the, the main goal is to, to make profit and to increase the profit. And therefore, you need growth. Um, 
Well, I, I I would like I mean I would like to add some some facts. I mean there there is a debate on a lot of different indicators where people said we need to consider this and we need to consider that and um, I think um, there is a reason why these indicators are not implemented. Um, can everyone give me a short agree sign if you know what is the triple bottom line? Has anyone heard about the triple bottom line already? Julia, would you would you mind explaining? Uh, Kilian, are you still there or? Okay, Julia, uh, I will give you speaking rights uh, if this is okay for you. I mean, I can also explain what uh, maybe in your own words. Uh, thank you. If I'm not mistaken, and if my memory is still correct, it's about the the existence of three actors: the private sector, and then uh, the government, and then also the civil society sector, where these three are forming the main uh, network for um, improving the uh, economic, uh, social, economic, and political uh, relations and activities. I think it's highlighting these three actors. Thank you. Yeah, it's actually going in, the, in this direction. The bottom line in economics is actually what we call in, in German the Bilanz. Uh, every uh, enterprise needs to provide a bottom line of like uh, what are the costs and benefits and at the, in, at the end you have a gain. The introduction of the triple bottom line considered social ecological uh, factors as another like the, Im the, Im the costs you have caused for the society, which don't appear in the normal bottom line calculation. It comes from the corporate social responsibility movement. The reason why it's not implemented is that these costs never really appear. It's like ecosystem services. Um, there are other interesting concepts. And if you ask for my opinion, I think at least uh, what we can argue for is to include the Gini coefficient in the calculation of economic development. There is certainly a reason why this is not happening because the Gini coefficient, as you are going to read in this in this uh, article and also in the in the report of the uh, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, Friedrich Ebert Foundation, um, the Gini coefficient is get, uh, like has 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 increased. It's like it's getting worse for Germany, even though our economy is growing. So it contradicts uh, a promise on which uh, systems rely. But this this would be certainly uh, one aspect where I think like easily we could take this into consideration. And the other question, uh, but we are at the end of the session anyway. Do you know um, an index for democracy which exists in the world? Just give me a short agree sign if you know. Okay. Lisa, would you mind? Oh, both. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, Li uh, uh, Lisa, M maybe you explain it just quickly. In general, um, I just meant like, for example, the uh, Demokratie Barometer, which uses different indices of what democracy is and then measures them across uh, multiple countries and makes them comparable. But I know there's different ways of measuring what democracy is. Is it more like technocratic about like are there elections and how many people take part or is it also about um, democratic freedoms or participation and stuff varies yeah you might you may might be interested looking up it's exactly that uh, I mean if you, you might be interested looking up the um, economic intelligence unit it's a neoliberal organization which also provides every year um, a world risk, a global risk report, which is very interesting to read. Um, but uh, they are uh, also providing an, an, uh, an index on different areas and they have the resources to do so. Um, I think for our future debate, uh, it would be worthwhile if you, if you would take a look, it's, it's free available on, on the internet. Uh, for the next week, I'm going to uh, to find some some of the data, and uh, at least it's from a from a neoliberal view for a point which helps in so far as uh, they use measures which are uh, in the 
contemporary zeitgeist somehow acceptable and uh, cannot be totally denied. But I mean, uh, three measures like this are, in my opinion, more reasonable, reasonable than introducing a triple bottom line, um, which just says like you need to count uh, all the costs which you cause for the society as long as the political systems don't make um, companies pay these costs for real because then there is no intrinsic interest for the companies for really making use of the information which are available of all. Okay then, I um, will uh, next week very quickly give you um, a short list of globalization theories uh, that apply to the scope which Marcus has provided by today because as you have heard there are many also contradicting arguments and this is due to the fact that there are many globalization theories which are summarized under this label and this may help us clarifying this a little bit. If you have nothing else, I thank you very much for joining this time. I look forward to seeing you next week again and all those uh, which I've addressed in the beginning, please rejoin the room uh, and thank you very much for Marcus for the presentation and otherwise I see you next week. Thanks for listening.